Hey guys, Ganesh Critic bringing an update to you about GPL's IT department installation of a virtual beacon that is going to ensure that we do not have any more accidents with the submarine cable that interconnects the Kingston Power Station with the Breeding Hoop Power Station. Um, this is a recent interview I had with the head of the IT department going into details as to how this will better serve Guyanese citizens. All large ships have a navigation system. Oh, they must. They're going to the ocean. This is international law. Right, we transmit a signal which is seen on those uh, navigation stations. So the captain coming into the anchorage and waiting on a pilot can see already and in the harbor, there are these two cables. And he knows precisely where they are. We transmit yeah. their location and we identify them. So, yourself, looking at it would go, hmm, seems to be a submarine cable there. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, don't throw down your anchor at that point. Mm -hmm. Because that's precisely what happened the last three times. Um, of course, it's the anchor. Right, the ship anchors where it feels it must, not knowing that there's a cable underneath, or somehow ignoring that fact. And, uh, a very large ship, remember these are thousands of tons, uh, dragging on the anchor can uh, easily wreck, wreck our cables. They can wreck anything. So you put that wave and pull. So now any ship traversing the, the harbor uh, on seas, they can see it on their maps, but even if they're not looking at their maps, if they're looking at their navigation system, and driving on a ship, you know, navigating, you know, you have to be looking at it. You would see that uh, the cable is there. Uh, we're the ones transmitting that signal constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The job of the captain is so much easier. He, he's got lights on the shore telling him something. He's got his map, paper map, if he looks at it, telling him something. But once he's paying attention to his navigation system, which allows him to avoid other ships, and other ships to avoid him, uh, he can also see uh, the location of GPL's uh, submarine cables. Uh, is there the possibility of us being aware of what the cost? Depending which cost you're speaking of. Uh, the yeah. last time we repaired this cable, you know, this is critical infrastructure. And it's not easy to, to put down, it's not easy to fix. Uh, the company spent uh, $200 million there about. Uh, took us about Does the damage, hours. the cost of the damage the last time? Fixing it, yeah. Okay, that's the last one. The, the, and it's the three one. instances where the cables. Yeah. Can you say what was the cost for the setup of the beacon oh. and the cost of maintenance on a yearly basis of uh, this kind of equipment? We did a, a lot of research before we put it down. We were certainly interested in the whole life cycle. You buy something that's maybe not so expensive, but then it's, it's very expensive to operate. And in fact, what we have. We spent approximately just over a million dollars, a million Ghana dollars, to, to purchase the equipment after reviewing uh, the various offers that they were out there. Um, the running cost is pretty much zero, so it's meant to be very sturdy. Um, we expect it to be essentially maintenance free, aside from the, shall we say, the um, uh, you know tightening up of screws or checking to see that uh, that connections are not uh, corroded and these sorts of normal things that you would find on electrical equipment. So we've got a pretty low maintenance uh, equipment, but we've already put it on our maintenance schedule because this is critical infrastructure that we're protecting. So we're not taking the chance that you know this is very good equipment and, uh, and it will last a long time. We're also making sure that it. It's kept up to date, it's maintained, it's kept powered. All of these other important things are happening in the background. And myself in particular are working, you know, well, they've put this on their schedules, they're keeping a careful eye on it. So we'll always have the facility. Is there a visible physical structure somewhere in the Demerara River, the beacon? This, this is the new age. This is the, uh, the virtual age, <laughs> the digital age. Mm -hmm. So it's called a virtual uh, beacon. Uh, it, to the ship, there's no difference. If you put up a light, a buoy with, with a light, and you put a beacon on that, that could also work. But that's pretty expensive to do, as you can imagine, and also pretty expensive to maintain and everything else. This allows us to operate a land-based facility, transmitting that information to the ship's navigation system. It's all seamless. 
they see it as an object in forever. So they see it as a, a virtual, um, they see it, it's a virtual object in the river, but they see it as an object in the river on their navigation screens. And that's important because uh, from miles away, literally distances of, you know, 10 kilometers or maybe more, we're still testing to see how far away people are receiving our signal since we set it up um, a week or so ago. But from that distance away, they will be able to see there is a submarine cable there. Well, thanks for this opportunity uh, to bring in and highlight in this to the public. Yeah. And I hope we could do more of this. Beautiful. Well, let's move to the sure data aspect of it. Come across here. Visible in the river. This is what any large ship entering uh, or leaving the Damara River sees on their navigation system. Right? And the public, and anyone else who is not based, can also experience the same thing. Right? You can, you can see that the position was transmitted, um, in this case, only two minutes ago. So it's being transmitted you know, every few minutes, all the time, actually, constantly, day and night. So that all ships uh, entering the harbor or leaving the harbor. And I'll just zoom out. Uh, let's see. And you can see that uh, all the ships are using the same system as well. Those are ships all out in the ocean, in, in the, what's called the anchorage area. This is where they wait for a pilot to come in. Right? So the ships to and fro there. And as they traverse the river, uh, up and down the river, uh, they will also be seeing on their navigation systems these three dots named submarine cable one, and these two dots named submarine cable two, warning them that there's a, there are submarine cables on the way.